I don't know about you, but I love looking at the night sky. Now we all know that the stars are extremely far away, but how do astronomers actually work out how far away they are? Well, that's really what this video is all about. But before we start, let's lay the groundwork first. So keep watching. I'm standing here on the Nepean River. It's a beautiful spot. And there's a lovely weir here, but I wonder how long it is. How do I get to the other side? How do I measure that length? Well, the way I can measure that length is using simple mathematics and trigonometry. And so if I measure a certain baseline from one side to the other, I can actually work out how far that is without having to ever cross the river. So in order to measure the distance to the weir, we need to see it from above. So now you can see the baseline. Standing from here, I can measure the angle between my baseline and between the end of the weir. And using this protractor, I get 70 degrees. Let's do it from the other side. Again, my baseline is that way. My end of my weir is that direction like so. And now if I use my protractor, I'm gonna get 80 degrees. Now you may be wondering, why did I measure it from this baseline and not from that baseline? Well, the reason is, the larger the baseline you have, the more precise the angles you're gonna measure. So I could measure it from over there, but the angles will be less precise. So the larger the baseline, the more precise you're gonna get. And that's an important point that we'll come to in a moment. So let's measure the baseline. Now the distance I get is 21 meters. Now let's have a look at the mathematics of working out my height. Now, my height of course is this total line that is going from left to right. I will be utilizing this particular distance here because I want to know the size of the weir. And so I've already measured this and this is actually equal to 10 meters. I first of all need to know the remaining angle. I've already got 80 and 70 here, so I now have 30 degrees in here. I can now use the sine rule that gives me values here of 39.5 meters and 41.4 meters. So now that we've worked out the sides, now it's very basic trigonometry to work out our height. So now you can also see we have a right angle triangle of which we know the hypotenuse. And so as a result, so we can say that the height divided by my hypotenuse, which is 41.4 is equal to the sine of 70 degrees. A simple mathematical calculation gives us the height of 39 meters. Now you remember my distance that is from the edge of the water to my baseline was already determined which was 10 meters and so my weir becomes equivalent to 29 meters. Now this is useful for objects that are really close and clearly you can measure angles from but when it comes to stars then it becomes a little bit problematic because of the extreme distances that are involved and as a result the baseline needs to be very very large in order to get decent angles. But we need to also examine it from a slightly different perspective and that is by a term called parallax. Let me explain. Now to get a sense of parallax what I'm going to get you to do is to observe me as the camera moves from left to right. What I want you to do is pay attention to what I do with respect to the background. Now my position hasn't changed much, but the background has changed a lot. Now what's going to happen if I increase my distance away from the camera? Let's try that now. Did you notice? The background hasn't shifted as much as when I was closer. Let's try a little bit further again. And one more time. So what did you notice? The further I went away, the smaller the angle change of my position relative to the background. In other words, the parallax, that is the amount the angle changes, gets smaller 
as my distance gets bigger. So that's an inverse relationship. That angle decreases as my distance increases. And that's the key to understanding how we measure distances to stars. Now you can do this yourself. Simply hold your finger in front of your eye and close one eye and pay attention to what happens to the background as you flick your eyes. You'll see your fingers move left to right. Hold your finger further away and do the same thing and you'll find your finger moves a lot less relative to the background. But if you remember from my previous section, what's really important for precision is the baseline. In this section, my baseline is no more than 10 meters. We need a really, really big baseline. Why? Because stars are excessively far away. Let me explain. Let's quickly have a look at a top perspective before we look at the star situation. So here you see me with the background behind me and you see the angle here. Now what happened when I moved further away? Well, obviously the angle you see got smaller. And that angle is referred to as the parallax. The parallax gets smaller as the distances get further. But now let's have a look at it from a stellar perspective, which is really what all this is all about. So here is my star, and here is a field of stars that are in the distance behind that particular star. Now, as I've said multiple times already, the larger the baseline, the more precise your measurements of the angles. And so what we do is to get our largest baseline, which is the diameter of Earth's orbit. In other words, measure the star's position six months apart, because the Earth is going to be on the other side of the orbit around the sun. And so that's exactly what we do. So in this case, my Earth is in this position here, and we take an image or a measurement of the star relative to its background. And you see the position of the star here. Then the Earth, of course, moves in its new position over here. It now measures the star's position again, and we get this. And now you see the star's position, just like me, has shifted relative to the background. And from that, we can now measure the angle, or what we refer to as the parallax. Now, here we could just say, okay, well, now that we can measure that angle, let's draw a scale diagram, and that allows us to work out the distance. Well, so now we can draw a triangle, right? Well, that's really problematic. The first thing is, is that if our baseline in this case, which is our diameter of the Earth, is equal to one centimeter, our nearest star is 300,000 times further away, and so we'll get a triangle that is three kilometers high. So you can see that's really problematic. Secondly, the angle here, our parallax, is incredibly small. We don't measure them in degrees, not even in minutes. We measure them in seconds or fractions of a second. Now, a second is one over 3,600 of a degree. And, well, how small is that? If you hold a piece of paper up at arm's length, then the angle from one side of the paper to the other side of the paper is already 30 seconds. So the angles that are measured from stellar parallaxes and so forth are obviously very, very precise because we're dealing in fractions of very small angles indeed. Now I've mentioned angles in terms of degrees, minutes and seconds. Generally speaking though, in astronomical terms, we actually measure angles in terms of arc seconds or seconds of arc. And of course, 60 of those is arc minutes or minutes of arc. And so because we have an angle that is arcing across from one to the other. So that, of course, is this angle that we have here is the shift that we see of our star from the background. That, of course, is also this angle, right? So now what we need to do to work out the distance of course, is to draw a right angle triangle. And there's my right angle triangle. Because these distances are so great, this orange line is almost identical to the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle, but I'm gonna use this because it helps us with our mathematics. However, understand also that the angles we generally talk about, therefore, is not the shift that we see, but actually half of that. So that's actually the angle, and we're gonna label that as P, and it's measured in arc seconds. Now we just have some basic trigonometry, and you'll see that we're opposite over my adjacent is my tan of my angle. So the tan of the angle that we're interested in is equal to my opposite, and that is equal to one astronomical unit. So I have one there divided by my distance. And of course, if I rearrange that, I get my distance is equal to one over the tan of the angle. Now, what we're particularly interested in, though, is 
having a particular value in line with one arc second or one second of arc parallax. And so in other words, if I substitute the angle of one arc second, so notice that they use a little AS there as our non-SI unit, then my distance ends up being 206,265 astronomical units. In other words, this orange line, if my angle is one arc second, then that distance is 206,265 astronomical units. And as I said, and of course, astronomical unit, this is simply the distance of the Earth to the Sun. Now, that is nice in terms of mathematics, but in many ways, it'd be nice to actually have even a simpler definition or simpler unit that we could use. And so what we now do is convert this number here into a new number, and we're going to be calling it a parsec. And we call it a parsec simply because we're having a parallax of one arc second. So now what we have is a new unit that we can use for distances. So in essence, what we have is one parsec is basically the distance where you have a parallax of one arc second. And obviously, therefore, mathematically, there's a relationship there as well. And so therefore, what we get because of this particular relationship up here, we have the distance is simply equal to one over P, P being our angle. So therefore, if, for example, my parallax is only 0.5 arc seconds, my distance is now two parsecs away, we have that inverse relationship. There is, of course, another unit that you may be familiar with, and that is, of course, the light year, another non-SI unit. And so we have an equivalence factor between our parsec and our light year, and one parsec is equivalent to approximately 3.26 light years. And so astronomers and cosmologists will use light years in some situations and may use parsecs in other situations. They are both non-SI units for the distances that we use in astronomy, but you can see mathematically we can just interchange them by that particular 3.26 factor. Now let me give you two examples of distances that we can use. So let's have a look at the constellation of Centauri. And I want to concentrate on two star systems. One's called Alpha Centauri and one is called Beta Centauri. Alpha is actually brighter, at least visually to us, than Beta Centauri. Now Alpha Centauri has a parallax angle of around 0.77 arc seconds or seconds. And as a result, you can work out the distance in terms of parsecs as simply the inverse of that. And you get around 1.3 parsecs. What about Beta Centauri? Well, its angle measurement is much, much smaller. It's only 0 0.008 seconds or 8 milliseconds. And so as a result, its distance is significantly further and we get a value of around 120 parsecs away. And of course, multiply that by 3.26 and that'll give you the distances in light years. Now, there are some limitations to measuring angles, and that's the precision of our instruments, but there's also the atmosphere itself. The atmosphere actually disturbs the light path as it comes to Earth, and so as a result, the ability to measure those angles, even though we have a really large baseline of two astronomical units, is a limitation. Now, when I was studying university way back in the early 90s, Generally speaking, the limit of reading is to about 100 parsecs. In other words, we were only able to measure to really one hundredth of a second. Now, that's because of our, our sensitivity of our instrumentation. But things have changed. So this particular image here, which is a uh, produced by ESA or the European Space Agency, shows you the actual ability to measure the angles with respect to historical time. And as you can see, it has improved considerably from let's say 150 BC with Hipparchus's measurements down to more recent times. Now that is ultimately responsible due to improved precision. But it also is due to the fact that the now we have the ability to put telescopes into space so we can avoid the Earth's atmospheric interference. 
I want to particularly concentrate on the latest telescope that has been put up and that is Gaia and Gaia put up by the European Space Agency has the ability to measure stellar parallax down to 20 microseconds and that means measuring distances up to 50,000 parsecs. That is a vast improvement to the 100 parsecs that I was taught way back in the early 90s. But that still confines us to our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And so if we want to measure distances beyond our galaxy, to the Andromeda galaxy and to the multitude of galaxies beyond our own, we can't use parallax. We have to use another method. But that is going to be the subject of a future video, so stay tuned for that. I hope that has given you a good insight of how we use parallax to measure distances to stars. Hope that has been helpful for you. I am ten intending to produce a lot more astronomical content in the coming months. So please subscribe and hit that bell so that you get all my latest updates. And please consider supporting me via Patreon. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.